The one thing you've taught me over the years is oil is not one barrel, one same and similar barrel. They're all different. The Permian Basin oil is different than the shale of Western Canada, is different than the easy stuff in the Gulf of Mexico. Western Canada oil fell under $4 a barrel yesterday, $3 a barrel, folks. Harry, what does that signal? Well, I, I think, you know, after this historic OPEC plus agreement, there's a lot of expectation for market driven declines in production in such countries as Canada, Brazil, and of course, <clears throat> the, the United States. The difficulty is when producers are going to be forced into uh, curtailing production and possibly eventually shutting it down <laughs> completely. So in Canada, when you look at uh, heavy Canadian oil sands, shutting down operations could cost you in the, in the billions. Whereas in the U.S., we're likely to see a much more rapid response. It is what, you know, economists would call a contestable market. You could get in, you could get out at, at relatively low cost. And in the case of U.S. shale, your capital investment is not nearly as much as, say, uh, deep water offshore or, or Canadian oil sand. So we're thinking <clears throat> that, you know, it's better for uh, certain operations to continue producing even at $5 a barrel. It does generate cash flow before making that very difficult decision to shut production in. So those areas that, you know, you could get in and out faster, like U.S. shale, that's where we're going to see the production uh, on a market-driven basis decline faster. Already right. the release of the U.S. EIA's drilling <clears throat> productivity report shows that, you know, production in shale is coming down already. Harry, when will you know, if any of the 16 or even 20 players, when will you know if they're cheating? <laughs> well, I guess uh, the best indications are going to come in, in early June, really, because uh, the OPEC Plus Voluntary Reduction Accords are effective as of the 1st of May. Now, of course, we have, you know, tanker tracking services. We also have satellite tracking services, and, and, and those services will help to get a, get a picture. But I think that the first real numbers start emerging <clears throat> towards uh, uh, the end of May, early June for, uh, for May production. And then that's where we'll see whether or not countries have followed through on their pledges. Um, Harry, how much, how much do we know about how much further demand will be eroded because of a coronavirus lockdown? Uh, the, the demand question is a very difficult question. As you know, there's a wide range of estimates out there in terms of impact. Some people saying that in April, as much as 20 million barrels a day year on year of demand have been lost to COVID-19. Some physical trading houses put that number even higher at 35 million barrels per day. It's going to be very difficult to, to really uh, get a, a good grasp of that amount till probably, you know, end of the quarter or even into the third quarter. But if we go with that kind of uh, range in, in terms of demand loss, uh, what we're looking at is OPEC voluntary cuts and potential declines elsewhere only proving to be a partial <clears throat> offset. So from a market point of view, the historic OPEC decision at best, at, at least for BNP Paribas, puts a floor under the market and with concerns alleviated that, you know, prices will go down into the teens. It's really at the end of the year when we have a lifting of all those confinement measures that demand is reinstated and that's where OPEC plus cuts will be the most effectual in supporting prices.